And Justice Stevens is out with a new book this Tuesday called Six Amendments. It's causing a bit of a firestorm with his controversial proposals for changing our founding document. He sat down with George Stephanopoulos. You've had a reputation on the bench as a moderate for so many years, and I read this book where you're calling for six amendments to the Constitution, and I wonder, have you become a radical? No, I think every one of my proposals is a moderate proposal. Each six amendments to the Constitution, moderate proposals. Well, I think each of them is is well, perhaps not. I hadn't thought of exactly how to <laughs> classify them. Justice Stevens' most controversial idea: adding five words to the Second Amendment. Here's how it would change. The right of the people to keep and bear arms when serving in the militia shall not be infringed. Wouldn't that take away any limits to what a legislature could do to the rights of gun owners? I think that's probably right. But I think that's what, what should be the rule, that it should be legislatures rather than judges who draw the line on what is permissible. And you think that's because it's clearly this is what was intended? Oh, I, I do think that was what, what was intended because there was a fear among the original framers that the federal government would be so strong that they might destroy the state militias. The amendment would merely prevent uh, uh, arguments being made that Congress doesn't have the power to do what I think is in the best public interest. But to be clear, if Congress passed a national ban on individual gun ownership, that would be constitutional under your amendment. I think that's right. In another proposed amendment, Stevens targets Congress. He says that gerrymandering to, quote, preserve political power should be unconstitutional. Pretty subjective, isn't it? Well, it's, pre it, it, it's, it's subjective, but it's, e it's easily recognizable if you look at the shapes of the districts that gerrymandering produces. It doesn't take a genius to say that there's something fishy with this, these particular districts. It makes me think of that famous Potter Stewart um, observation about obscenity. You know it when you see it. Uh, right. And I think uh, Potter Stewart would have uh, agreed with the, <laughs> what I say in the book. So you also express great optimism in your book that eventually all of these will pass. I, I really believe that. I, I was talking to a, a close friend of mine on the way in here. He started laughing out loud yeah. at, that, at that idea. These seem like they're, 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 they'd have almost no chance in today's political system. Well, there, perhaps today there, there might be no chance for, for, for certainly the Second Amendment uh, uh, proposal. But the difficulty of the, of the process shouldn't uh, foreclose an attempt. When Justice Stevens retired in 2010, he was replaced by Elena Kagan, a solid vote in the court's liberal bloc. And now Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, 81, is resisting calls from liberals who want her to step down this summer so that Obama can appoint and a Democratic Senate can confirm her successor. Is that something that you think justices should consider as they're making that decision? Well, uh... I did not consider it. You did A lot of people no. think you did. No politics at all in your decision. Well, my decision was not made for any political reason whatsoever. It was, it was my concern about my own health. Do you think it's something that justices should take into account? I, th I think so. I think certainly natural. It's a, an appropriate uh, uh, thing to think about your successor. Not only in this job, I'm just finishing re the, reading the book by former Secretary Gates. He thought a lot about his successor in job too. It's, you're, you're interested in the job and in the kind of work that's done. You have to have an interest in who's going to fill your shoes. So if Justice Ginsburg came to you and asked your advice? I'd say she doesn't need my advice. <laughs> she really doesn't. Very wise. It's uh, interesting because she did ask my my advice when I when she became the senior associate justice, and basically I gave her that same answer. One final question. I was so struck by a the letter that um, President Ford wrote before he died back in 2005, where he said that he was prepared to have his entire tenure as president judged by his selection of you for the Supreme Court. He was so proud of that choice. As you look back on your more than 40 years on the bench, how do you judge your own contribution? How do I judge my own? Well, it's really awfully hard because it's a series of individual important events, and some are terribly disappointing, and some are terribly gratifying. And you mix them all together, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's really hard to 
pass judgment on the on the uh, entirety. But uh, uh, all I can say is I did the best I could, and I didn't <laughs> didn't do well enough on many occasions. Well, I think everyone agree you did your best, and there's a lot you should be proud of. Justice yeah. Stevens, thank you very much for your time today. Our thanks to George. Check out an excerpt of Justice Stevens' book, Six Amendments, at abcnews.com slash thisweek.